Hello and welcome to the Friday, January 13th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In Diaries today, well, Russ is back and Russ likes to talk about tools. This time it's Prowler version 3. Prowler is a tool to essentially uh, audit and assess uh, your uh, cloud configuration security. What's sort of unique about it is that it does AWS and Azure. A lot of uh, the tools that are similar are only sort of focusing on one particular cloud provider. And apparently there are also plans uh, to include uh, Google and uh, Oracle's cloud. And version 3 is now uh, rewritten in Python. So all you need uh, for installation is a pip and now Russ is walking through through the basics of getting going with Prowler in his diary also has some sample output to basically tell you if this is something that you would like to look into more closely and Daniel Milicic uh, did uh, post an interesting uh, write-up about their experience uh, with a pre-compromised Android TV. Now, in our data, we do see a lot of scans for port 5555. Uh, this is the Android debug port. And people are often asking, well, you know, why people are still looking for it. Normal Android phones are not listening on this port. But uh, actually, it turns out that Android TV sticks and such often still do and well this was only one of the problems with Daniel's device here it came with not just one but apparently multiple pieces of malware pre-installed that were happily communicating with their command control server and in this case it didn't just happen to be sort of the usual spyware and such that you find on these devices in order to basically monitor your browsing habits and things like this but pretty much simple outright malware that was also a kind of a difficult to remove also the version of Android 10 on this particular system appear to be, as Daniel puts it, at least sketchy. We've run sadly into similar cases multiple times uh, before. Often it's uh, sort of devices with like some sort of USB storage capability. There was a famous case uh, with Apple uh, iPods that came with a malware on their uh, USB drive. Now, uh, in that case, it turned out to be a uh, infected test system that these devices were connected to that then ended up copying the malware to the uh, USB drive on uh, these iPods. There were also uh, some uh, devices that were returned by users and then just repackaged without wiping them and any malware that sort of made it on to the device uh, as it was uh, tested by the original buyer uh, was not removed. And now Daniel here uh, published uh, instructions on in how to deal with the malware, how to remove it, and how to reset the device. Uh, the blog post on GitHub also contains some details as to how to detect uh, this particular malware, but uh, I doubt that's the only one. So definitely be careful uh, with sort of random devices that you're purchasing that the software installed on them is genuine and, well, uh, the software that you are expecting. Uh, network uh, monitoring is usually your best bet here to find any problems because it can be in some cases quite difficult to actually gain access sort of uh, to the device itself to see what processes and such are running. Here, of course, with the Android debug port open, that made the investigation somewhat easier. And well, then we have what uh, I think is a new way to actually decrypt LTE calls. Uh, LTE by default is encrypted and for each call it should use a unique key stream. So a unique set of encryption keys that's being used to encrypt a particular phone call, making it uh, impossible, at least in theory, for uh, two users uh, to eavesdrop on each other's uh, call. The problem here is that uh, the Keystream is not really unique per call. It apparently, due to some implementation issues, it's unique for a particular radio connection. Now, if an attacker is able to essentially 
reuse the radio connection that the victim initially used and then place another call. The same key stream is being used. And then of course the attacker has a known content for the call. They will be able then to recover that key stream and with that uh, decrypt the prior call. The vulnerability was identified by researchers at the Ruhr University in Bochum as well as New York University in Abu Dhabi and they were nice enough to inform affected vendors back in December 2019 and basically gave them until now to deploy relevant patches. Let me have a not really unexpected, but I guess new to some problem with next generation firewalls. Next generation firewalls, of course, have the big advantage to be able to identify application layer protocols by inspecting the payload of the data that you are sending. So for example, you're able to write a rule that blocks Telnet, no matter what port Telnet is running on. But don't assume that by blocking Telnet, you block all traffic on port 23, because in order to actually see if it's Telnet or not, the firewall has to allow at least the three-way handshake to pass. So as long as you're never really completing the three-way handshake as long as you're just sending since and uh, maybe synax uh, you will be able uh, to uh, smuggle data through these next generation firewalls like i said shouldn't really be a big surprise but you have to be careful how you're implementing your rules in these firewalls so that you really understand what you are blocking well that's it for today thanks and for listening i hope you are telling all your friends, enemies, and uh, pets, and everybody else about this podcast, and are leaving good reviews if you your podcast platform allows you to. So thanks everybody for doing this, and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.